Hi, this is Brendan Cronin from the Queensland Eye Institute, demonstrating the technique of Bowman's membrane harvesting for Bowman's membrane transplantation. See this epithelial removal there? This is a corneal donor mounted on an artificial anterior chamber. I'm removing the epithelium there with an epithelial spatula. It's very important to be careful when doing this so that you don't score or mark Bowman's membrane centrally. I've stained Bowman's membrane here with vision blue and then I'm scoring very peripherally in the cornea. You need to just go through Bowman's membrane here. We use a 25 gauge needle. You don't want to go deep into the stroma. You can get a difficult uh, layer where it's quite tricky to actually peel off Bowman's membrane at the start, but I'll show you some tips that I've learned over time to make this easier. I score in a linear fashion around in the periphery of the cornea. You want to be nice and peripheral so that you have enough room and enough Bowman's membrane to remove any peripheral tears that appear, just as you would in a DMEC. Here I'm using my forceps, and you can see I'm really using the tip of the forceps, and we call this the pick technique of just trying to pick up an edge of Bowman's membrane peripherally. This can take some time, and it's really important to be thorough and careful with this. Getting a nice edge for 360 degrees really makes the rest of the preparation much, much easier tears here need to be removed as they would in a decimase membrane endothelial keratoplasty. You can see I'm just doing this picking technique peripherally using the tips of my forceps. You'll see here I'm about to start using a lamella dissector. This is a technique I developed for cases where it really is difficult to start your uh, separating your Bowman's membrane from the underlying stroma. It's very very delicately Hold Bowman's membrane, you can see that I'm keeping my forceps parallel to Bowman's membrane so that I have a good purchase on them. I'm just using the lamella dissector to very carefully just dissect between Bowman's membrane and the underlying stroma. It's very important that you don't collect stroma as well as Bowman's membrane, but it's quite easy to find that surgical plane. It's really not difficult at all. In this case, I had a lot of difficulty starting the separation of Bowman's membrane. So I've gone around for almost 360 degrees using this technique and I've really found on difficult cases. It works very nicely to facilitate a good peel. In the peripheral part of the cornea, I use forceps like this to give me nice purchase on Bowman's membrane without causing any damage to the membrane itself, which is important. But you'll see as we move further into the cornea, you'll find it's much easier to use Moorfield's forceps. It's quite a foreign instrument for corneal specialists, and we're so used to very fine, delicate forceps. You'll see here, the Moorfield's forceps just look enormous, but they get a great purchase on Bowman's membrane, and this really is, whilst feeling unusual for corneal surgeon, the best way to get a great purchase on Bowman's membrane and peeling centrally each time. I do find this to be the safest way the most effective way of peeling Bowman's membrane once you've got an adequate start to it. I always peel centrally towards the center of the cornea and with the Moorfield forceps it really is the most efficient and safest, most effective way once you've started. We've got a nice 360 degree separation of Bowman's membrane from the stroma. So you'll see now, once I've peeled Bowman's membrane, I lie down on a contact lens into the block that we would normally punch a corneal graft in. I find the contact lens really provides a nice smooth surface for Bowman's membrane. I lay the cornea down on the contact lens and then I punch it actually in the block on the contact lens. It's a great little addition. It certainly makes the preparation or the trephination of Bowman's membrane much easier. You can see from the video just how tough Bowman's membrane is. It really is very rigid and adds a lot of strength to a cornea that's weak or ectatic, such as in keratoconus. It's a great procedure and can really improve corneal topography enormously.